Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. Hey, I got a surprise for you. You know, I got some information about the council and all, about other things, but the big surprise here is that I have my grandson on here, and he's from Wise High School. His name is Evan Brown. Now, I, all of you all just sit back. Evan, tell us a little bit about your high school. They, they are champions. In fact, they won the, the, the uh, championship two years in a row. And your coach is what? What's the name of your uh, coach? Coach Paris. Co coach Paris. And, and uh, what, what do you think about uh, uh, the, the fact that you're going out for this championship team? You know, that means they got some, if they got a championship team, that means they got some tough guys. <laughs> so it's tough for you to make the team, you know. Yes, Tell yeah. us. What, what made you think that you could make this team and, and, uh, and, and actually become one of their uh, stars? Well, um, it's definitely a pretty good program to me, how they have the players. Because um, right well now we have workouts um, at school, after school. We, uh, we do lift, um, lifting, we run, we do all that stuff. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think I have a pretty good chance because, you know, People, you know, like me, I'm I'm not that big or tall, uh, and um, you know, they people, underestimate. Yeah, you, they right? always underestimate you yeah. of your size or how right. um, how well they think you can perform on the field and all. So, but you're gonna prove them wrong. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. I, I I like to prove people wrong. So yeah. it's like, right. um, for me, that's what you have to do. You have to have confidence. Yeah, yeah. you have once you have confidence in yourself. That's the most important thing because there's always gonna be somebody that don't have confidence in yeah, you, that, that it's going to be critical. So yeah. you can't let your peers decide what decisions that you're going to make. Yeah. You make there's so many, as uh, sports go, there's so many, uh, I think, the, uh, uh, in basketball, uh, they have Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Now, he's, they, they, he said they laughed at him and everything, you know, that he was too short. To, he's only 5'9", yeah, so, you yeah, know. Yeah, but he, they, that he was too short. But he made, in fact, I think he's one of the uh, major improvements. Yeah. Uh, one of, one of, of the top team. point guards in the league. Yeah, right. So that, that's the most important. I'm glad that you're positive about, uh, you know, making the team. Well, what are you, uh, what, what subjects do you like? You know, what are you majoring well, in? Um, I like math, um, government, you know, learn about different politics um, mm -hmm. in the world that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and math, you know, I like that because it's challenging, so. That, it, that's what you yeah, want. It puts you want a challenge. Success. Once you get a challenge, then that makes you go after it a little uh, harder, you know yeah. what I mean? But what happens is that uh, you make up your mind and, and you set your sights, which you've done. And, and with the, uh, I guess they say, well, uh, Evan is too small. But you know yourself that you can make the team, although it's, it's yeah. a championship team. Yeah, okay. uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the players that you know of that's on, on the team. Well, I know last season um, Jabari, Jabari Laws, he was he was one of the top quarterbacks for um, high school football because he he's pretty good. He's, he's going to um, uh, I think Army University. I forgot. Yeah, oh, oh. Army um, and um, AJ, mm -hmm. um, Anthony Lynn. What, what he's, what he's going to uh, West Point? That's um, that's the Army University. Yeah, you know, just like yeah. uh, a Navy Academy here. Then they, well, West Point is really the Army University. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's thinking in terms of uh, uh, doing that. Now tell, tell us a little bit about uh, a position of uh, being a wide out. What are some of the things that you have to be able to do and some of the things that you're working on to make this team? Well, I know for me, um, I always put in you know, a lot of hard work, um, even though we don't practice. You know, I still put in a lot of you know hard work to be great and different different things. You I know for wide receiver, you gotta make sure your footwork is on point. You gotta make sure your catching skills and then you basically gotta think about just scoring touchdowns, not think mm -hmm. about everybody else on the field. You know, just you know, knowing your teammates and knowing how well they um play. So it's all it's kinda all up to you about how hard of work you put in and different um skills that you can do, you know, improve. Cause I know for me I I play safety and wide receiver, well, slot mm. receiver. So, you know, for me, I always um, look at different highlights from great NFL plays, wide receivers, 
um, safeties and different things that um, I see that I can improve on, you know, catching. Um, I know for, for instance, um, Odo Beckham, I know how his one hand catches that mm -hmm. way, you know, made me want to start practicing. And I was like, I know he's not the only one that, that can do that. So I was like, let me try out. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I have my, my brothers that throw me the passes. My yeah, dad. that's what I was yeah, doing. Yeah. Uh, what are your brothers, uh, oh, oh, give me their names and, and, and do they get involved uh, with trying to help you oh, wow. uh, win a position there on that team? Well, my oldest brother's name is Edwin Brown, and my um, he, Edwin Brown the third, and then uh -huh. my um, other brother, older brother, his name is Ellis Brown, mm -hmm. and they help me, um, you know, practice outside with different mm -hmm. forward drills, different. Well, and Edwin he um, runs track, so he's he gets. Yeah, a, well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, uh, the fact that you you your uh, father's had you uh, in track uh, ever oh, since yeah. you were born, just about the. The conditions in track that really helps you in your position because a, a wide receiver, he has to be fast. A safety has to be fast. So one of your things must be your speed. Yeah, that's my main thing in, in football. <laughs> you know, I always practice, I like practicing on speed, yeah. you know, because people, you know, since I'm small and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of strength over different people. I have speed. So, you know, as soon as I get the ball, you know, I'm just heading for the touch. Mm -hmm. I'm running mm -hmm. downfield. And, um, you know, different things with speed. You got, I know you got to definitely put a, hard, a lot of hard work with that because you got to practice that almost every day. If you don't practice that, then your speed is going to you know, start decreasing. So, well, well, tell me this. Do, from, do you do any weight lifting? Um, yes. I lift weights at um, Wise High School after school. Uh -huh. for, um, it's, it's workouts for the football team. And I do it sometimes at home, too, mm. you know, to make sure my strength can get good. Not just want to be fast. So you uh -huh. want to know how to take hits, too. Mm. Not just for your fast, but when you get hit, you know. It's just yeah. over so you want to be in shape, and, yeah. and, and, and that's a key, you know, to your success. Uh, first of all, being in shape, you got to be in shape. You know? Yeah, you and uh, 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 the, uh, you have a positive. Uh, 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 you actually you think of the positiveness of your making it, and that's that's one of the keys, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you do something, you got to have faith in yourself. Yeah, exactly. And as long as you have faith, you're going to be successful. It yeah. may not be to the level that other people uh, <laughs> think it should be, but it be uh, uh, you would be satisfied with that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so um, now they won the Wise won the championship two years in a row, right? Yeah, two years. And and, and what about your coach, uh, Coach Wise? Um, I mean, coach, his, no, no, it's Wise High School, not yeah. Coach Wise. Okay, <laughs> what is the coach? Well, um, Coach Perry. I think he's a pretty coach good. Coach Perry. He's a pretty good coach. How always. long has he been there? Um, I think he's been there since the school opened. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I believe he been, has. Um, he's been there for a while, and because it's a new school now. Yeah, it's, it's a new school, and then you know the turf field. They got that too. Um, the last, well, the first season they won the state um championship. They got they had the turf field that year. And Coach Pete, he had said, since they got the new turf he had said that, that he was going to bring them a championship that year. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and, and they have artificial turf now. Yes. Uh, uh, when the school was built, apparently they didn't have it. No, they but didn't they, have it at first. They didn't have it. But that, that makes a big difference in uh, practice and, and yeah. games, doesn't it? Yes. Because you practice on the uh, artificial turf. Yeah, on the turf. Well, well, what, what, what do you think about artificial turf? You think that's, that's good or bad? Well, well, yeah. Is it positive the fact that you don't have mud on you all the time? <laughs> that's the only thing I can see is that you have to worry about is that yeah, mud. Yeah, the mud, yeah, that's, uh -huh. that's true. Well, for me, um, I like turf field the best because for me and mud fields, I, I, get, I slip sometimes, you know, mm. in the grass. Sometimes if it rains, the grass can be really wet, or if it's muddy, you know, mm. it's, now, it's now, hard Now, the other sometimes. thing, too, that affects it, what about the type of shoe? Oh, uh, now, uh, is there a, a different, if you're a lineman, naturally, if you're uh, 300 pounds or something, what, what, is there a special type of shoe that a wide receiver, a safety would have? You know, because I look at them and they have cleats in it. You know, some of them have three in the front and two in the back. Some have four, some have three. Yeah. Well, I mean, every position normally has a different type of cleats. Well, I yeah. know, I know, running, well, I know uh, wide receivers and Safeties and corners, they all normally wear the same type of shoe. Normally, mm. the, line, the linemen, O-line, D-line, all of them, they have different type of cleats. Yeah, because, right. you know. A lot of people don't realize yeah. that. 
that they, although the shoe may be the same color and, and, and design the same, is that uh, the number of cleats yeah. uh, and the design is very important based on position. Yeah, it's definitely important. Mm -hmm. I know for wild receiver cleats, mm -hmm. um, I like Adidas and Nike the best because mm -hmm. to me, the, it fits tight on your shoe. Mm -hmm. Well, on your foot, I mean. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I like that. The arms are the best. And then Under Armour and those, I don't. It, it just it don't fit my like for me personally it don't fit my foot right because I know for um Nike cleats and those they have lightweight cleats they mm -hmm. got different because new technology is out now yeah well that's what yeah they, they got different you no know, weighted cleats or lightweight right. cleats for certain positions I know if you lineman you gotta get those kind of bigger cleats mm -hmm. so it's like you you can plant your feet in the ground you yeah gotta, right. yeah all yeah, that you gotta yeah. get keep keep that weight by yeah keep yeah. yeah okay well tell us a little bit you know principal of the school. Oh yeah, Mr. Coleman. I, I think he's a um, great principal for Wise. He keeps things in order there. Um, he does a good job. But yeah. it's, you know, you yeah, keep everybody you straight. You're impressed yeah. with him. Uh, yeah, I, I like uh, And then. Well, we want to wish you a, a lot of luck out there and everything, okay? And okay. Uh, you have the right attitude that you can do it. Don't let anybody discourage you. Yeah. Hey, this has been Ed Brown. And you got a surprise. We got Ed Brown's grandson on from my wise high school okay you're gonna hear about him because he's gonna make the team see you in a second we're gonna talk about some of the things that are happening in prince george county with the county council and the school board see you in a second Welcome back to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. Uh, I, I tell you, uh, most of you probably uh, do a lot of watching TV, but uh, you need to get out to the zoning and hear those zoning meetings and hearings on the zone because the uh, I attended one uh, uh, at Councilman uh, Todd Turner, and it was so many things that they presented uh, to the people, that uh, the people responded to it, but uh, one of the problems seems to be that, uh, and Park and Planning is working on this, is the zoning regulations, uh, uh, they are cumbersome. In other words, uh, the, the developers don't like it, and the, uh, the people, they are in a position where they don't understand the zoning regulations. Uh, one of the things that uh, we talk, they talked about is uh, pre-application neighborhood meetings. Uh, what they're trying to do is get it so that the uh, uh, developer and the developer and the neighborhood, they would get together more like they did at uh, Councilman Todd Turner's meeting at uh, uh, the uh, last night I uh, attended that, and there was a lot of uh, people there had good points about the procedure, and they complained about things like the metro stop not being developed, and and that uh, most of the uh, mo some of you may not know this, but most of the seventy percent of the tax money comes from taxes. And this is, this is the thing that I think that all of you should get involved in, is, is finding out this 70% of people, and every time you look, they want to raise the taxes for some reason. But anyway, uh, the uh, citizens, they don't understand the regulations. The regulations are antique. I was on the planning board, I know. It's, uh, the process, it takes a while for the zoning and, and the uh, people in that neighborhood to uh, really come together. And usually they come together in an adversary uh, mode, you know, where they're each other's throat. 
And that's basically because the zoning regulation are outdated. They, they're really outdated. And uh, some of the people at the meeting was complaining about development of the uh, uh, metro stations in uh, Prince George County. Um, well, they had what uh, uh, you call liquor store and uh, used car lot, and you know, and and uh, those type of businesses that uh, are usually the people, uh, you know, they don't participate in them once in a while, you know. But the idea is that they're looking in terms of uh, the uh, upgraded. Uh, stores in developments around the uh, um, metro. And they, I know a lot of people saying that Largo is going to get, uh, uh, well, the metro station is there. They're saying that they, uh, uh, as far as the other stations are concerned, uh, they have uh, uh, crime and things of that nature that make it unsafe, you know, to be, uh, on the stations that and metro is having problems with scheduling everybody knows that they getting ready to uh, uh, fire some people or get rid of people or retrain them I don't know uh, which or, 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 or either if they don't do that I think uh, metro should have uh, more public hearings because people don't understand I had one lady <laughs> One lady he said, yeah, we see him out on the track. <laughs> he said that uh, they have these uh, yellow shirts on and everything, but they're not doing nothing because uh, uh, we still have a lot of uh, maintenance problems uh, and closing down the lines and things of that nature. But I, I think uh, Councilman uh, Turner uh, brought out uh, some good points about our really revamping parking plan and zoning uh, laws because uh, I know I know some uh, of the builders some of the people that are involved in that and uh, uh, around this area I think uh, they said Prince George County has the worst uh, uh, zoning laws you know as far as getting things done so we're looking forward to and I don't know how much we can really look at it is the, f the fact with the presidency changing of uh, FBI coming to uh, uh, Prince George County. Um, that I'm sure that's up in the air because uh, our president is the one that's gonna make, probably make the final decision on that. And uh, hopefully it'll be positive for uh, Prince George County. But anyway, the idea is that your involvement and all of these processes are very important. The zoning and involved in the budget. Speaking of the budget, uh, you have any time the uh, school board is 67% uh, of the budget and they haven't had an audit, people talked about that. They said the school board is, uh, you know, is 60 some percent of the budget, but they haven't had an audit in eight years or something, something like that. And uh, uh, every time they look up that they want to raise the taxes. And uh, a lot of people feel that um, the commercial line should take uh, on their shoulders more of the responsibility and not let the homeowners. It seems that the homeowners are the ones that when they need money, this is where they go. But I think they spoke uh, I, I think last election, I think they turned things around, you know, but I think there still is, is a problem uh, with the school board as far as uh, developing uh, the youngsters uh, in, in a way that they do in other jurisdictions around here. I, I, and, I, and they do it with less money. <laughs> that's, that's what people, they don't understand, less money is that uh, Montgomery County and uh, Virginia and places like that. But anyway, the value of going to the, uh, the council-sponsored meetings is to make you understand what the process is, what it takes. A lot of people really don't understand that. And this 
thing that uh, uh, Council Materna is doing is, I think it's spreading all over the county where the councilmen are getting out into the neighborhood and, and really getting some input. But it seems that they have uh, problems with the, with the regulations. Some of the regulations for Prince George County are antique and uh, they are causing problems and, that, and they're causing money <laughs> too. Don't forget that part because when you need money, just like uh, the fact that we, what was that, six, we lost $6.4 million of the Head Start program. Okay, they, and then the uh, uh, Governor Hogan, he cut the education budget for Prince George County, so that didn't help either. So th those are things people have to realize that's that go not going to happen. It's happening right now is the fact that uh, if he cuts the education budget, then you're going to have to pay more money in your education. And if we're paying more money, and then we got to uh, tighten the belt as far as the budget is concerned for the school board and find out really uh, of what they're doing and getting the most for the money that the people are investing. And pe people, they, they look at uh, areas and really when you look at different areas, this it is all over the country, not just Prince George County. Uh, desegregation, segregation is back. And they use segregation in setting up the, uh, where you live uh, determines on the quality of schools that you get. A lot of people are uh, uh, wise to that. And uh, the, the curriculum in certain schools is one thing in another school depending on where you live. And uh, uh, most of you know uh, uh, that uh, this is all over the country, is that uh, uh, the uh, uh, quality of education is based on where you live, because where you live is, you know, well, the politician, they have control of that too, because uh, uh, redistricting, they have redistricting, which in the last election, uh, a few of the politicians, they got together and they redistricted for various reasons. Some were racial and some weren't. But they, you know, say, hey, look, uh, I, I, I don't like this district here. And they moved district lines and r really they backstabbed each other because some of them lost in, in that election uh, because of uh, redistricting. Then another thing is, is very sensitive and, and, and people, uh, uh, you know, hint at that too, is uh, how uh, uh, term limitation, uh, 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 a lot of people were quite, uh, they question the fact that uh, uh, the politicians in office uh, now don't support term limitation. Well, I can understand that because that hurts their pocketbook. But uh, actually, redistricting should be, uh, should, should be done by uh, uh, a group of uh, uh, individuals who are not in the political system because uh, this is why you have uh, individuals uh, 25, 30 years. Hey, we got to get the young people a, a break, you know what I mean, uh, and have term limitation. This was one of the items, too, that uh, uh, people were concerned about, you know, uh, is getting involved in the political system. But if you want to get involved, you have to go to meetings. There's no, if you don't, have time, you go to the movie, you go to the different place, you go to ball games and things of that nature, but you something that's going to affect you uh, for years, uh, like uh, your taxes, like the quality of schools that you have. If people went to uh, uh, the council meeting like they do football and basketball games, we would have no problem. You know, they would know what the issues are and how to correct them. But most, most people are not informed about how the system works. And the best thing to do, when, as far as that's concerned, attend all those meetings. You may think, oh, I don't feel like sitting there, but your children's going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it eventually. So what you, what you do is put those uh, civic meetings in, in priority and also 
the meetings with the uh, county council, the meetings with the county exec, the meetings with the state and, and the national electors that you put in an office. So right now there's problems. Why is there a problem? Because people didn't do their homework. And, and when you don't do your homework, then you have to take what you get. But anyway, uh, I think the council is doing a terrific job with uh, trying to revamp, revamp the zoning process and the subdivision reg regulation. Because uh, this, if we do that, we'll attract more uh, high-grade businesses and uh, they won't be taxing your pocketbook every time they need something to raise the tax. We can't do that. You know what I mean? We got to develop some kind of commercial program that's going to produce money like our different neighbors. That's what they do. That's why they have money to do things, fix the roads and things of that nature. This has been Ed Brown. Hey, look, don't forget the next council meeting, the next Senate meeting, whatever meeting concerning your future, you better be there or have a representative. See you next time. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. plan today. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. fees and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. 